One of the big Hollywood deals out there uh, that came out, of course, you know, a lot of these storytellers, filmmakers, showrunners, they come up with these shows and they sign big deals with networks or what have you. And one of the big ones that, of course, is out there is the one that J.J. Abrams signed with Warner Brothers in an overall deal. Now, one of the things, one of the shows they were supposed to bring to air was a show that they were working on called Demimond. Demande? Demande? Demimond? Demi Mond. Demi Mond. Demi Mond. Demi Mond. That's what we're going to go with. I don't care. You tell me a D E M I M O N D E. Sounds like an ice cream flavor, so whatever. Anyway, <laughs> that was one of the shows they're supposed to be coming up with. But of course, there's a new sheriff in town at Warner Brothers. And the axe of Zaslav has been swinging free and hard over there at Warner Brothers, culling everything in its wake. And it looks like J.J. Abrams is not immune to it. This comes to us from the folks over at Deadline. I'm going to read this a little bit at length here, just because, like I said, this is kind of new. This just came out. J.J. Abrams' ambitious HBO sci-fi drama series, Demi Mond, has hit a major roadblock in its long journey to the screen. The issues related to the show's price come amid talks of a potential reevaluation of the massive deal J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot has with Warner Brothers for film, TV, gaming, and digital content as the new Warner Brothers Discovery is scrutinizing every aspect that they took over. Now, here's where it gets specific about their show. Brought, uh, bought by the network four years ago with a straight-to-series order. Demi Mond is still in early pre-production, but major budget issues are threatening to derail it. According to sources, the studios on the project, Warner Brothers, Television, and HBO, have been trying to rein costs in, but Bad Robot has kept firm on their proposed budget, said to be in the mid... <clears throat> $200 million <laughs> range and would not agree to any reduc reduction in below cost. Now, it goes on to say a little bit about this. While current talks between Warner Brothers and Abrams are focused on Demimond, we here at Deadline hear a broader discussion about Bad Robot's deal is also on the table and is expected amid, amid a big, across-the-board, close examination of Warner Brothers and Warner Media's business by Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff. Okay, so... What do we take away from this? Number one, ain't nobody safe at Warner Brothers. David's a, damn watch. <laughs> David, I don't know why. That didn't even sound like Siri. It just it came out. Anyway, nobody is safe at Warner Brothers. David Zaslov is dead serious about whipping that thing into shape and getting it right. And there are no sacred cows over there. Even established firm deals, like the one they have with Bad Robot, I said, mm, is it firm, though? Is it firm? Yeah. And he's saying, really? Really? $200 million for a season of television? Are they doing Lord of the Rings in space? Like, what the I was going to say, is your name Lord of the Rings? Is your name Game of Thrones? No? Well, we may have to reevaluate this. Yeah. And listen, I don't, I don't blame J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot at all for trying to hold the line. If you came to an agreement about what our budget was going to be and you hammered out that deal a couple years ago and you made that deal and you made the agreement and you shook hands with whoever was running the show and now the new owners coming to you saying, hey, can we cut back on that $200 million? I don't blame them for saying, no, that's your problem. That's not our problem. We made an agreement. $200 million, We're sticking with it. So I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. But... The axe of Zaslav will draw its blood. It will have its day. It will not be left wanting in thirst. It will claim its next victim, and it will be this show. I guarantee you right now, there's no way this show is going to get made for $200 million at this point. And that raises a bigger question, too. How far does this stretch? Because this deal incorporates, like, all these things J.J. Abrams is supposed to be doing, including a new Superman project that nobody's talked about for a while. It's been very, very quiet on that front. And that may have quietly already had its throat slit at this point. So that may be gone and off the table too. I mean, the implications of this could be broad and wide. And people thought I was over-exaggerating when I said, when this guy takes over this company, there's going to be changes made. And everybody thought I was over-exaggerating. Apparently not. Guys, we want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. You know the one with the delightful ads with good Canadian kid Ryan Reynolds? So look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. 
So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. And guys, that's no joke because for years I've been using one of the major providers and it was fine. But I switched over to Mint Mobile a little while ago. The service has been fantastic. And the big difference is I'm now paying about one third of what I was paying before. And the best part for anybody who just hates their phone bills is that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Anyway, Chris, you're hearing about this. Number one, I've never heard of Demimond. Yeah. I don't even know what the word means. Apparently, you and Aaron had yeah. to look it up before. Yeah, actually, uh, could you read the, the do you have the Let it brought up there? Because up. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is a show about Aaron and Chris, yeah. which is really exciting. So thank you, J.J. Abrams. In 19th mm -hmm. century France, the class of women considered to be of doubtful morality and social standing. That's us. Right. That's <laughs> kind of also on my hiring profile. Yes. A apparently. group of people considered to be on the fringes of respectable society. Which like everyone on the internet right now is like fringe. Okay, sci-fi. J.J. Abrams connecting yeah, perfect. the dots. It's done. Done deal. We get what the we show is. We are living is. in the Matrix. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, show I've never heard about. Yeah. Two hundred million dollars. So first of all, what's your reaction to hearing number one that this show had a two hundred million dollar budget? Number two that they're looking at axing it a bit, and could there be wider implications with this overall deal? That budget is but puckeringly bananas. But puckering <laughs> bananas. Just to that swallow is, a coffee. I almost spit it on the console. <laughs> <laughs> that is out of control. Which, again, are you Lord of the Rings in space? What is happening? What is this show going to be? Because when I look up a definition of this is probably a class of women of doubt for morality or people considered to be on the fringe of respectable society, which is almost every ragtag group of people in sci-fi. Right. right. So far, I love JJ. I love a lens flare, but I don't know anything else about this. So I'm doubtful of why he needs that budget. That's a big for why for me. And I also need to know what it's about before I can really decide whether or not this is a terrible thing that's happening over at Warner Brothers. It does go to show, though, budgets are important. Staying on budget is important. And if somebody tells you to lower your budget, probably listen to them if they're the one who gets to decide whether or not your show gets made. Uh, I mean, yeah, and look, and the other thing you got to keep in mind, too, is, like, why do we care about what gets spent on this? Because mm -hmm. these studios have budgets. Yeah. And if they're pay paying an extra $50 million for one thing, that means something else isn't getting that $50 million. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like they're trying to balance out, like, let's invest our money in things that the audience will enjoy and, and will gravitate to. I, I don't know. Anyway, Aaron, you've heard about this. I, I'm sure you've worked on projects that maybe have had the plug pulled because of budgets before with as many projects you've worked on. But anyway, you hear about this particular project. <clears throat> they want to cut the budget. JJ wants to hold the line. What do you think is going to happen here? Well, when we're talking about budgets, let's let's also, you know, break it down. We'll have a little Cummings classroom, but I don't have my whiteboard. So when we're looking at $200 million for the budget for the total series, not just for one episode, for the total series, apparently eight of the 10 scripts have already been approved or have, are going through the process. So we're looking at a 10 episode season. So if we break it down, it's $20 million per episode. Lost, also a J.J. Abrams property, at the time set the Guinness record of $13 million for a pilot. Now, that was for the pilot. It obviously had the huge fuselage. That budget did not continue for every single episode. But J.J. Abrams is definitely known for pushing the budgetary boundaries. He started that with Lost. He's obviously continuing it now. Um, when we look at the game, speaking of Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones prequel is also in the world of $200 million for the season. However, However, this is, as you pointed out, this is not Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones already has a built-in fan It's a known base. commodity. They it's a proven IP. They already know this is something worth investing. And so 
especially for a straight to series show. You know, one of the reasons why a studio or a network will film a pilot, get the pilot approved and then go, okay, now we're going to give you all this money is because they watch the pilot and they go, yeah, we think people will watch this for a straight to series unknown commodity that we can't even pronounce. That's basically, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is a shocker that this was ever approved in the first place, even for someone like J.J. Abrams, who is known to be the hit maker. But ironically, when I just Googled J.J. Abrams' budget, a little Los Angeles Times interview that he did came up in 2012, where the first thing is a quote from him saying, it is preposterous and embarrassing that movies cost what they do. Um, so that's kind of, and he said, uh, yet we always get it figured out before production starts and realize that the money you don't get forces you to rethink something and challenges you to figure it out in a new way. So I'm hoping that perhaps J.J. Abrams will remember that quote from 2012 <laughs> that he gave to the Los Angeles yeah. Times, because I would love to see a show about women of loose morals. I would love to watch that show, especially if it's set in space or it's sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would love to get maybe a role on that show, just putting it out there. Um, so I, I would love for this show to happen. But yes, the Acts of Zaslav is definitely coming down. If we look at two, 20 million per episode, it's not crazy, but it is a little crazy for an unknown commodity going straight to series. So JJ Abrams, get creative, man. You can do this. Just tighten that belt a little. Yeah. And, and again, I just want to emphasize, I don't blame JJ for, for trying to draw the line. Like oh, if yeah, you make a deal and somebody says, we're going to give you 200 million to do it, I don't blame you for trying to hold the Get line on that, that but million. this is not a fight he's going to win. Exactly. It's Can I ask you something that's slightly off topic? Sure. How do you feel about him doing a Superman project if it does come to fruition because Superman's your boy? I, I love to see him try. Okay. I'd love to see it, tr to see it try. I mean, again, I, there's a lot of JJ Abrams stuff that he's done that I've been very fond of. There's mm -hmm. certain things JJ Abrams have done that I'm very not fond of, but overall, like he's never afraid to take big swings mm -hmm. and I've always appreciated that. And you know, and if he does Superman and it works excellent, if he does it and it doesn't work, oh, well, we try to move on to the next iteration, but I don't even think that's going to happen now. Yeah. Well, you I know, really he, when he happen. was, when that interview was done, he was currently at Paramount and he was talking about oh. how notoriously frugal we'll use that word paramount is with their budgets and then um you know and then now he's moved over moved from paramount to warner brothers presumably because of the looser pockets that they have yeah, and they had all that at&t money they thought <laughs> then they right. gonna throw all this at&t money around so anyway guys question is for you what do you think about this i know many of you have been gasping and waiting for demi mondi to come out I still Demi don't even Mont, really know. Loose French women. <laughs> Demi Mont are the champions. That's the theme song. <laughs> Demi Mont are the loose French women. <laughs> Shout out to all my Digimon fans. There you go. I'd like to apologize to all women in France. We at the John Campy Show do not think all Bonjour, women in France. Bonjour, <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, whatever your thoughts about this are, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.